The Tudor Black Bay 58 has been my favourite diver ever since I bought it. But wait a minute, the Black Bay 54's here. Is it any good? And is it better than this one? Let's get into it! Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. And today is another episode in a long line I like to call Buying at BQ. Yes, if you are looking for a pre-owned luxury watch or you're wanting to sell yours, BQ Watches gets the seal of approval from the MWC channel. I recently traded in my 214270 39mm Explorer for a 14270 and I've got to be honest, I couldn't be happier. But over the last few months, I've been trying to find their best watches for under £5,000 on their website and people, I have found some absolute beauties. BQ offer a two-year warranty, a 14-day money-back guarantee. If you're not happy, they won't be happy. <laughs> now, finally, I get to review a Black Bay 54. It's only taken a year and a half. All right, calm down. It's been hard to find. Anyway, it pays homage to the very first Tudor Samaria that was released in 1954. Now, if you've been watching the channel for some time, you will know I am a very proud owner of not one, but two Black Bay 58s. Over the last almost 10 years of searching, this watch, in my opinion, for me, is the best dive watch still on the market. It's been very hard for any other dive watch to get a look in on my wrist. But there was always a niggle in my brain. What if the 54 is better? Yeah, it was something like that. And today you're going to get my opinion on which watch I think is the best. And let me tell you, I am very excited. What I'm not excited about is at the end of the show where my wife gives her opinion and which one she prefers, whether she prefers one at all. <laughs> Are you Black Bay ready? Let's go. So ladies and gentlemen, here is the Black Bay 54. And because it looks a lot like a Black Bay 58, I've got to say I love it. However, it looks like the Black Bay's 58 younger brother that is a bit weedy and has no personality. But you've got to give Tudor credit for being ballsy enough to make a 37 millimeter dive watch. Now I've handled a lot of vintage divers in my time, all around the 36, 37 millimeter size. This definitely does not feel vintage. It's only in the dimensions. It feels a little bit like jewellery, but almost dainty feeling. And right from the start, for you and for me, we're going to put these two watches together so you can see the differences straight away. Now, even though there are only two millimetres difference in case size between these two watches, the 54 looks so much smaller, doesn't it? Both of these watches have a screw down crown, screw down case back, are 200 meters water resistant. Both have an in-house Kinesi 4 hertz chronometer certified movement inside with a 70 hours power reserve. Both are automatics and both have a unidirectional 60 click bezel. The finishing is done exactly the same as far as I can tell. Brushing on the tops of the lugs, beautiful polished chamfer, polishing on the sides. I can never fault the finishing of a Tudor watch. On this review, we're gonna do things a little bit differently we're going to take the inside and we're going to work our way out starting with the dials now even though these dials do look the same at a glance there definitely are a few differences for starters the black bay 58 has a matte black dial the 54 well first of all it's a sunburst black and it dips when it gets to the end where the minute track is me personally i prefer a matte black dial it's more tooly it's more military-esque for my mind and it makes the dial more legible. However, I do like the printing more on the 54. It's a glistening gilt gold, whereas the 58 is more of a matte finish to it. Now, back in 1954 and 1958, the Tudor Submariner had a Mercedes handset. This specific handset was made in the late 60s in conjunction with the French Marine Nationale to make a dive watch more legible. With the Black Bay 54, the hour markers are the same, the hour and minute hand is the same, but they've chosen to use a lollipop circular seconds hand rather than the squared one from the 58. And to be fair, I think it works better with the circular hour markers. It sort of brings it all together. 
Both use the same amount of lume on their dials. C3 Super Luminova doesn't stay massively glowy for long, but fine in my books. <laughs> on both watches, the dial is protected by a dome sapphire glass, and I really do love that touch. Now, a big difference between these two watches are the bezels. Although they are both unidirectional and 60 clicks, the grip on the 54 is truer to that 1954 Tudor Submariner than the 58, which has a coin edge to it, which no Tudor Submariner ever had, by the way. Now, when operating these, oh, they are lovely, aren't they? Now, I would have to say that the grip on the 58's bezel is better than the 54. In actual fact, the 54's hurt my fingers a little bit. Southern fairy. You would think that the grip would be better because the knurling is further apart, but I prefer 58s. And in terms of looks, I prefer the 58s again. The gill on the aluminium on the 58 just works so well with the gill on the dial. It gives you that warm, sentimental, vintage feel that I'm looking for in a watch. With the Black Bay 54, all the colour has been stripped away from the insert. Yes, this is a true representation of the 54 Submariner, but it makes this watch look a bit more sterile and bleh. also how good is an upside down red triangle on a bezel insert and to not have it on this watch bleh. um could you just click that like button please it really helps the channel Thank you. On to case dimensions. The 54 is 37 millimeters in diameter and the 58 is 39. The lug to lug of the 54 is 45.7. It's 47 on the 58. The thickness on the 58 is 11.9 mils. On the 54, it's 11.2. So we are talking very small margin numbers here, aren't we? The lug width is 20 millimeters and that is gonna stop this watch looking tiny on the wrist. On to the crowns. Now with the Black Bay 50, the knurling of this crown mimics the bezel. It's very chunky and I love operating it. Now the 54 has a more of a Rolex Submariner crown and for me it's just too small. And in fact as the years went on Tudor made a bigger fatter crown because they felt like it needed it. And they were right! Now on to the bracelet and for many of you this is where the 54 wins hands down. Unfortunately for the 58 it doesn't have a T-fit clasp like the 54. A very solid milled clasp with an on the fly extension or restension. I don't know what the word is for it but yeah i happen to think that on the fly adjustment is a little bit overrated people wore bracelets without on the fly extensions for like i don't know 50 years and they were all right with it however for all those sweaty boys and girls out there that carry water like spongebob squarepants an on the fly adjustment may be what you need hello on my six and a half inch wrist, and both watches look rather lovely, don't they? Because the Black Bay 54 has the 20 mil lug width, that's the reason why this watch would suit bigger wrists. If this watch was off the bracelet, and on a NATO strap or a two-piece leather strap, it would look significantly smaller. I just feel that the 58 on my wrist sits the best. It feels more like a sports watch than the 54, which is crazy really because they are very similar. I don't know, it's just the characters. I just feel like there's a lot going on with the Black Bay 58 and most of it all comes down to the bezel insert. The 54 is a fantastic representation of an old Submariner, something Rolex would never do and Tudor do it so well. But on my wrist, I would still go for the Black Bay 58. <laughs> So there we go, two fantastic Tudor watches that are available on the BQ website right now. A 2022 Black Bay 58 is on there for £2,950. The Black Bay 54, which is a 2023 version, is on there for also £2,950. If I had £3,000 to spend now, I would definitely go for the Black Bay 58. I feel like you're going to enjoy it more. It's going to give you enough character to make you not want another watch. There is a reason why this 58 has almost doubled the stock of Tudor since its release in 2018, is it's because it's almost a perfect dive watch. Yes, you might not see many people using it in the sea, but it could do the job. The one thing this watch needs in 2025 is a T-fit clasp. 
However, I don't think it's gonna come on a regular Black Bay 58. I think they are only gonna come on Metas certified 58s, probably with a burgundy bezel. As for the 54, I know some people and some reviewers are looking for a blue version of this watch to come out. I think this would look cool all green, a deep Tudor green, a little bit like the Harrods color. But listen, if I was rich beyond compare, I would most certainly have a 54 in my collection right now. But that's just my thoughts. What do you think? And more importantly, what does the wife think? So here it is, my wife's thoughts on both watches. Which does she prefer, the 58 or the 54? Ha ha ha. Oh great, a couple of boring watches. I guess the one on the left is less boring, but still, both the. Ha ha! Yes! She smashed it. She went for the 58. Good on you, girl. Um, she didn't like him, though, but I knew that. Thank you so much, BQ, for sending this watch in to me. I'll be shipping it back to you ASAP. Thanks for watching till the end. If you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector, click here and join. But if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you click this one? This is superb. Let me keep you on the algorithm gerbil running track. Yeah, or the hamster wheel for sure. Go on, click it. Click it, you'll love it. Click, click, click it.